participants a warm welcome to all the participants from various institutions and dr ngi ngi team participants i welcome you all for webinar series 2.0 organized by institutions innovation council of dr ngi institute of technology now i have been received by dr d dorian dorian grupe who is the director of computation institute research foundation she received her b tech in information technology from madras university chennai me in computer science and engineering from anna university chennai and psc in computer science and engineering from anna university her research interests include parallel and distributed computing peer to peer computing grid computing cloud computing and big data analytics Previous positions include Professor and Head of Loyola ICAM College of Engineering and Technology in the Department of Information Technology, Assistant Professor at the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Sri Venkateswara College of Engineering, Chennai. Teaching research is associated with Dr. N. G. P. Department of Computer Science, Anna University, Edison College of Engineering, Chennai. She has published about 30 papers in international and national journals and conferences. She is a life member of IST. She is a reviewer for Computer and Electrical Engineering Journal and Future Generation Computer Science Journal. She has been the research person for a workshop on digital classroom, big data analysis using Android data science, using Python, machine learning, deep learning, cognitive computing, and software testing. I welcome you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I presented my screen on behalf of Computational Intelligence Research Foundation. i would like to spend my i would like to share my thankful notes to the college invited me to give the talk on data visualization using python audience you have got you have just completed the previous session and now we will go on to the session my screen is shared this is my screen seen you can just type s yes. all right thank you so as given by uh, the professor the introduction uh, i was into the teaching field for a decade right okay i dorin robin i was teaching for a decade and then i started this company called computational research intelligence research foundation it's a section 8 company we have registered under ministry of corporate affairs government of india basically this company we work for the research right basically with the research then education and training right so these are the three models we work on with that this is a company's website all right and what do we work on with we generally work we work for corporates to find solutions to problem we as a team we work for solutions to problem and in addition uh basically work with uh, we design and develop new nature inspired algorithms to tackle real world problem so we use big data analytics the iot's the data mining the data sciences artificial intelligence and we do a uh, research in education technology right uh, and we train on the latest technology to make the students industry ready and faculties teaching ready right and uh, we work with the, the technologies that we basically train is on big data using hadoop python programming hybrid mobile applications that's the need of the hour and the front end development and full stack uh, website development for phd scholars we give technological training and they find solution to the problem we help for little uh, on general publication and reputed journal and training on lactic it's a tool that enables you to write the pro programs sorry to write your research papers using the tool so that you can use it for i triple or acm or whatever it is right and we provide also faculty internships okay and technologies we have trained and uh, this is what we say if you want to become a good uh, data scientist for the students in first year we give training on Py data science using python during the second year we give training on machine learning using python third year data visualization and the fourth they work with big data analytics using hadoop or python some of them they jump over to web application using django iot and raspberry pi right now coming on to our presentation okay you are able to hear me is my screen seen yes no yes my screen is now visible ma sure thank you thank you for the insights right now we'll start off with the session so we are going to see about data visualization in the previous speaker she was speaking about like ai all right and uh, what is data visualization right data visualization is the discipline of uh, trying to understand the data 
okay you need to understand the data if i give you like five books of full data whether you'll gain insights you can but it takes lot of time for you to read about it and then gain insights right so the part of data visualization is the discipline of trying to understand data by placing in a visual context so that patterns trends and correlation what is the pattern of the data what is the recent trends of the data and correlations that may not be otherwise be detected can be exposed okay i'm going to ask you a question most of you would have visited colleges right once you enter into a college okay a profound college what is that that you see on the reception or when during the entrance Yes, you can give your answers in the chat boxes. Be quick. I, I I'm asking you a very simple question. When you enter into, because most of you would have, you could be a faculty or, uh, for example, you could be a student or seeking for admissions. Reblack it, right? Replay it and say when you enter inside a college, what is that you see first? You can give your responses in the chat box. Reception. Yes infrastructure what is that the college will emphasize you you think you you are first entering into the college right for example you think uh, that you are entering inside ngp dr ngp institute of technology for the very first time i have visited but still the admission office what is that the college will emphasize more on the administrative yeah last year placements are not these board right you picked up the point yes we are streaming it on youtube also you can check it after which it will be live yes your achievements exactly your achievements and the number of students present number of uh, companies that visited the uh, institution right mostly the achievements the past percentage okay so before you go into the college or the school will give you an ambience how powerful the institution is say for example if they are going to keep lot of notes and ask they um, and they ask you to read through it and get it it takes lot of time say for example you are on a medical emergency you go and visit a doctor okay before you go into a doctor say for example there are 10 doctors for a cardiologist right there are 10 doctors if there is a visualization of the doctor how many dead how many survived okay thank you sanjeev sir your achievements thank you john louis sir okay so if you have a map so the if, the if this patient is treated by this doctor these many patients survived and these many patients dead so we will able to figure out okay to choose which doctor to get treated first who has got the best survival well, right so uh, followingly the data is a more more important for visualization right the data visualization is trying to give you the insights about the data what is the time patterns what is the trends of the institution what is the correlation how many of them placed how what was the number of seats that are filled which can otherwise not be detected which when it is not exposed now i'm showing you a picture just tell me when you see this picture what do you get you can just put in the chat boxes i'm just showing you a picture when you see this picture what reflects on your mind you can put it on the chat box various locations ma'am various locations or branches are available yeah various locations branches each of you will get different insights you can tell me various locations in india right others please what is that that reflects into your mind when you see this picture locations other than that covid cases you are exactly right uh, kalayara sensor and kirti narayan okay sanjeev sir too okay you are exactly right i didn't tell you anything just see the picture and tell me yeah indicated about some places to be viewed as yes, john louis sir rajeshwari ma'am you are correct so i just said to see the picture okay and then i asked you what is that all about what is this image is all about 
okay but so initially most of you said it's about the important locations like in india or some places around the world but some of you were very specific to tell me because you probed into the data okay you probed into the data state telangana total cases death recovery is active so the point that reflects in your mind yes thank you sujita ma'am okay so how many people are affected using covid all right how many death and i didn't say anything just see the picture and tell me for some it was location and some it was covid cases but in specific it was all about the covid cases right covid cases so now moving on to that so so i didn't tell anything right i didn't say anything just see the picture and tell me what it is so a picture is worth a thousand words okay even i speak thousand words it is not going to be used a picture a single picture is worth thousand words so you right now you will try to understand how powerful is data visualization it you are obtaining insights from analysis okay you're just obtaining the insights what is the data set is all about in our company cirf we have worked with more than 10 lakhs to 20 lakhs of data okay if i give you 20 lakhs of data it takes maybe a two or three weeks for you to read through it and gain insights but it takes for me microseconds to upload the data upload the data into my structure and then i could do the analysis okay data visualization plays a vital role in in the in the representation of both small and large scale data it is not only for large scale data even for small scale data one of the key skills of a data scientist is the ability to tell a compiling story okay you you should who has told you a lot of stories in your age in your young age who has told you a lot of stories you can put it in the chat box. Yes. Have you listened to stories at least? If yes, yeah, grandma, 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 grandma. They are the best data scientists in the world. Okay, yes, teachers. Thank you, grandma. Most of them, it goes to your grandmother. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jay Lakshmi, ma'am. Thank you, Rajil Singh, sir. Okay, so your mother, you know, ma'am, it's your mother. So when you, when they tell you the stories to you when you were in your young age, and still some people like to hear stories, how many of you had the habit of visualizing the stories? They would have told with lots of uh, modulation in the voice, you know, it came and it try to grab it yes yeah, sure you are able to visualize only by the words they speak yes thank you most of them it is yeah you have inhabited okay so which means if you want to become a data scientist okay this key skill is that how to compile a story and visualize the data in an approachable and stimulating way okay uh, learning to visualize the data will also enable you to extract the information i just showed you a picture Okay, I just showed you a picture and some of you said, yeah, it is about the important location. But some of you were very smart to figure it out that it is all about the COVID-19 data set. And specifically, it was projecting about the Telangana COVID affected people. Okay, so a key, yeah, the key skill is that from visualization of data, and you are able to extract the information okay you are able to extract information you better understand the data and make more effective in making decision the entire sentence what is that you gave the reply about uh, the map that i showed to you okay so now we are going into the different data visualization tool using python okay i'm going to ask you the next question how many of you have worked with python or do you know what is python Yes, no, no, yes. If yes, you can give um, in. It is similar to C language, no, ma'am. It is uh, similar to C. Yes, it's a programming language, but C has got both compilation and interpretation. Here, we have got only interpretation. There is no compilation. Yes, please. So Python is a programming language, okay, it's interpreted language, and the syntax is very simple. It is not, even though if you write the correct logic in your C, C++ or Java programming, all right, if you give an extra space, think your logic of the program is right, 
okay your logic of your program is right but if you miss a semicolon if you miss a semicolon then your program doesn't work yes yes or no because in c c plus this java more emphasis is given to the syntax of the program than the logic to be derived okay is there any python programmers here have you worked with python yes no yeah manikam sir yes okay some of you said no okay yes no yeah so most of you have worked in it's a language which is very simple there is very less syntax because you can any one of you say who invented python programming is there anyone who can share who invented python programming yes mohammed sir a big round of applause to you it is did but he invented by gudio van rosen okay gudio van rosen he invented uh, this language called as python programming in late 1980s okay he started this programming in the programming language in late 1980s actually was writing a programming language uh, for a distributed operating system called as amoeba and for that amoeba he was writing a high level interpreted language called as abc and then he thought this language is too good then he expanded it to python can any one of you say why does the name python came to this programming language most of you said yes you have worked it's uh yeah it it was in line, late 1970s he also had the uh, option of seeing comedy series okay if you see a comic story okay if you read a comic story or if you see a comedy tv serial or if you see a comedy film what do you do what do you do yes please give your answers quick on the chat box if you see a comedy serial or if you see a comedy film or you read a comedy book what do you do how do you feel yes no no yes you feel very happy kalaima you laugh exactly you laugh you have you enjoy okay more than if you see a crime crime kind of stories you don't like it but if you see a comedy story you cannot you see uh, our kids they watch cartoons okay if the comedy cartoon is there even though we are elders if we sit with our kids we sometimes sit with our kids and watch it so if even without a subconscious pain we laugh we enjoy is yes. python was invented by gideo van rossum and he was seeing this uh, television series or he was reading this book called this monty python flying circus it was a comedy series book so he enjoyed reading it so that's the word python came so he thought whosoever is going to code in using python they will also enjoy reading the book yes okay uh, now moving on to the data visualization there are many libraries available okay but i've selected a few libraries for you to show i selected seven libraries okay first library is this uh, session is only about data visualization okay matplotlib okay matplotlib okay how are you going to plot okay in a two dimensional the next the above matplotlib the next python package these are python packages okay the above uh, matplotlib there is a higher level graphical um, uh, kind of visualization that is done that is done using cborn i'll show you the demonstrations of cborn and the third tool that we are going to see is about the bokeh okay b o k e h so you can get output as an html file and it is even more brilliant than matplotlib and cborn folium folium is a tool that you'll be able to plot um, that i actually as i showed you in the first beginning okay how in a map it has been plot i'm going to show you about a kind of rainfalls okay uh, for the past 10 years how can you visualize it using the package called folium and plotly is another beautiful package okay it's another beautiful package as see i'm just ordered in such a way how it was simple in matplotlib how the visualization grows and grows and grows and grows right and last is geo the next is geoplotlib i tell you about geoplotlib uh, even there are more tools on to the websites okay and next the final tool will be pygal okay now we are moving on to matplotlib the entire session has been uh, even it's recorded by your college and it is also 
available in my YouTube channel, Doreen Robin. You can like, you can subscribe. So I'm lined up for next 10 events. So whenever I come online, you'll be able to receive the insights, whatever I shared. If you're interested, you can subscribe to my channel and like this video. Now, moving on to Matplotlib. So what is Matplotlib? It's a comprehensive library for creating both static and animated and interactive visualization in Python. I repeat it for static, all right, for animated and also for interactive visualization using Python. OK, it makes things easy. OK, it makes things easy and hard things. It is making possible. Now I'm taking a very simple data set. OK, I'm taking a very simple data set. The first column. Can you see the first column? It's about employee IDs. OK, 10 employee IDs. All right. And then I'm going to take up the gender, whether they are male or a female. All right. And then uh, I'm going to take the age of each employees. All right, and then uh, what is the sales? Okay, the sales. Uh, what is the body mass index? Is it normal or overweight, or obesity, underweight, normal? Okay, and what is that income? Okay, so these are the things I'm going to have taken. Now I'll show you. Uh, yeah, so can you see? So I'm importing pandas as PD, okay? So pandas is another Python package, okay? It is used for Python for data analysis, okay? This package, if I take my data set, it could be of a CSV, which is called as a comma separated values or a TSV tab separated values, or it could be an image data set, or it could be an Excel, whatever is my form of my data set, I can import using pandas. So I'm importing pandas as PD, and importing matplotlib, I told about this package, right? So it is used for plotting, okay? Matplotlib.pyplot as plt. I'm making it inline so that I want to see the graph in my environment itself, all right? So I'm creating a list here. I Some of you would have uh, learned in Python. So whenever I use a square bracket, okay, it is about the list, how to create a list. Inside the list, I'm creating like this, like the employee ID which uh, gender what is the age what is the sales what is uh, what kind of bmi and what is their income right after that my normal list okay i'm taking it as a normal list and now i'm converting this normal list into a data frame okay the data frame is the data type of pandas i repeat it data frame is the data type of pandas so i'm declaring a variable called df which is equal to PD dot data frame data comma columns. Since I've just given the values here, I'm declaring my columns. First is my employee ID, the gender, age, sales, BMI, and income. Okay, I'm just going to try to draw a histogram. So when I run the program here, can you see for the say age? For income and sales, the histogram has been plotted. Okay, the histogram is being plotted. So what does histogram? Histogram represents the frequency of occurrence of a, a specific phenomenon which lies within the specific grade and are arranged consequently at and as fixed intervals. Say, for example, if your data set, you get the marks of students, okay? Then you can say how many number of students are between 40 to 50 range, how many of them are the specific occurrence, okay? That could be taken as histograms. In the code that we have plotted for age or which age group are these sales represent these okay available and then what is the income and what is the sales so with that that's the graph we showed you here okay can you see i'm just using i'm creating histograms df dot hist of and then i'm plotting it all right the next thing i will show is there any questions on yeah okay thank you the next thing that we are going to see is about the columnar graph, okay? A column chart is used, okay? Uh, show the comparison between different attributes, okay? What are the different attributes and comparisons over time, all right? And then the next we'll be seeing about box plot chart. Okay, what is a box plot chart? It's a graphical representation of statistical data, maybe which is minimum or which is in the first quarter 
it is a medium, it is in the third quarantile, and what is a maximum? So it comes from the fact that graphs look like rectangle. Okay, when I create a box plot, it comes as rectangle with lines extending from top and bottom. All right, so because of extending the lines, this time is sometimes called as box and whisker plot. It is mainly used for quantile and median. Okay, now I show you this is for the bar graph. Okay, normal bar graph. First, I plotted a histogram of the data set for the 10 data set that we have taken. All right. And then I'm just trying to play into bar graph. So I've got three age. I'm defining it for age and for the sales. Okay. So age, sales, and income. So which age? So people of this age, what is the sales? What is the income? So here I can say people of the age of this range has got the highest income. Okay, by seeing this, I can say the highest uh, uh, sale is because of people who are little of higher age. See, just one graph, okay? I have the same data set here. I'll go slowly. I have this data set, but I cannot incur more data. But when I try to visualize my data, I'm trying to get insights about the data. Okay, I'm going to trying to gain insights about the data. This is the normal a plot graph with the age, sales, and income. The next I told you about box plot. Okay, df dot plot dot box of only for the income. I can say which age or is the income, the sales. All right. So this is how we plot in for a box plot. And now I'm just trying to plot uh, for the age. Okay, for the age I'm using these are the labels. Okay, these are the labels. Okay, and then for the income and then for the sales. Okay, so when I see how it has been equally distributed using the pie chart. Okay, only one data set of 10 tuples, right? This is for an example of a smaller data set. Okay. Okay. Can you see for age, sales, and income? Okay. The next thing that we're going to see is about a scatter plot. How do we're we going to do a scatter plot between income and age, between income and sales, and between sales and age? All right. So I'm just giving my, from my data frame. I'm just uh, figuring out, uh, giving out the input data, and in my output, you can see how the scatter plots have been plotted. So this is a very simple example. This is a very simple example of using matplotlib. Okay, of using matplotlib and how you can do your visualization. There are plentiful examples, but I've just showed you a simple example. I showed you about pie chart. So the static number, how categories represents or the whole on of um, uh, representation part of a whole, the composition of something. Okay, a pie chart represented in percentages and total sums up to hundred percentage. I showed you about the age, the income, and the sales, right? And we showed you about scatter plot, df dot scatter dot plot of. I have to give what I should have in my x-axis, what I should have in my y-axis, then the scatter plot. So it tells me the relationship between different variables, and I can reveal the distribution trends. All right. So this is also found to outlayer if I'm going to have some data or people who try to behaviors of people. Okay, normal people, what is their behavior? If the scatter plots are plotted somewhere outside the range, then I can clearly figure out that particular person has got a different kind of behavior. Okay, what are the kinds of behaviors you have? Sometimes we are happy, sometimes we are sad, sometimes we shout. Sometimes we are anger, right? So you you know with your friends, if you if you are with people for more than some years, you know what kind of characteristics people are. So by having the characteristics of people as a data set into our Python framework, okay. Once I feed in my data, once I give the scatter plots, then I can see uh, for a sector of people what kind of. Uh, can you say about the uses of Python language? Python can be used for plentiful purpose. For this session, we are seeing about a data visualization. Python can be used for machine learning. Python can be used for deep learning uh, purposes and writing. Um, uh, and also, it is used in IoT whenever you use Raspberry Pi. Okay. 
thank you geetha ma'am okay you can check into my channel i've got plentiful videos in my channel about machine learning deep learning ai and robotics okay a lots and lots of videos are there more than 700 plus videos you can watch it out whenever you find time all right so the next package that we are going to move is called a seaborn okay seaborn harnesses the power of matplotlib to create even beautiful chart i'm going to show you you will experience the difference right the key difference is a seaborn's default styles and color papers which are defined to be more aesthetically pleasing and model okay there are people who are more aesthetic of the kind of people and initially itself i said seaborn is built on top of matplotlib okay any questions in the meet no whenever you have got questions or doubts you can po post it into the live chat i'll be able to answer it right a feedback link will be shared by the college and also in the youtube channel at the end of the session kindly do not ask it for that during the session it may be uh, 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 distracting for others who are watching the session thank you now i'm going to uh, this is also an example of matplotlib i'm using this package called numpy okay numpy stands for numerical python i'm going to use the pi the pi value what is the pi value you know 3.14 i'm going to give lin space so it will take regular intervals of space and i'm going to use this function called the find function okay so i'm just giving the values i can show you yeah so this is the output of it okay so when i give a sign value you understand the sign value comes like this if i change the function to cos it will be of inverted right so i can generate a sign waves if using my python and this is again this i already showed you about my this i'm just generating a random values and trying to plot my graphs this is the bar graph which i showed you is a stick bar graph and also this i forgot to say in there okay so it's a contour mapping contour is the finding the edges okay i'm just trying to this graph this kind of contour graphs is also possible using this function plt.contour okay i'm just taking x and y values and trying to figure out the contour i showed you the example of pie chart and quire quire plot also can be made using python for cyclone detection for wind okay that it could be done for multiple plots and polar axis is another visualization tool that these all things this comes inside your matplotlib now moving on to a next tool called seaborn there is a data set called iris iris is a flat okay iris is a flat this is the benchmark data sets if you are into fresh into maybe for data science or if you are fresh into your machine learning course this is um uh okay i'll come to that questions okay so this is the basic data set iris data set okay it's about a flower okay iris is a flower okay if you just uh, put in google or whatever it is iris data sets okay so this is about uh, here you have got three species okay it's a very classical data set used in almost all machine learning okay machine learning courses can you see here it has got 50 instance okay see the late that it was donated is 1988 but still there are a lot of people they work on with it so it is about the pattern recognition of a classification okay it can be used okay this data sets can be used okay it has the sepal length and sepal width you would see in the flower like sepal and petal the petal length the petal width and which class or which species it belong to there are three species of this flower iris setosa iris versica and iris virginia okay so i'm going to take about the data set okay so i'm loading the data set so now i'm importing seaborn initially the first thing when i showed you uh, yeah we can use python on image processing yes sir you can use python on image processing in my youtube channel uh, you can find out i have given sessions on how to use open cv and also i have given sessions on using uh, object detections right uh, so iris sns right i'm just loading my data set 
project i'm here trying to plot a graph called a swamp plot okay i'm trying to uh, plot a swamp plot okay there are different plots available in seed born okay so the species i said right the species what kind of species and its petal length and for this i can see how it has been plotted the data is iris and next i'm using it for my sepal length okay there are three species and the sepal length so i can see from this data it has got the uh, le the length of this uh, species has got the highest sepal length okay and using same thing i'm trying to import the titanic how, what is titanic how many of you remember about titanic what is the reflex in your mind when you hear the word titanic it, let me get some responses feedback mm -hmm. it's a movie yes then what are the other things about titanic what is the main main yeah it's a movie what is the major role in uh, titanic ice break break yes thank you angeline my romantic movie oh my god oscar what is the main objective of titanic ship ma ship what happened to the ship it is get inside they met the with an accident and many people died and very few survived and when they built the ship they thought it's one of the major ship which was the failure of the system a big round of applause to annapurna okay drowning yeah most of you are think see how powerful is data visualization here is the best example most of them we forgot about the main concept of titanic it was an accident and people died but when i asked what is what what that reflects in your mind about titanic you are all trying to say about it's a uh, it's a love it's an oscar it's a film okay actress only live okay that but major thing see since you have seen it the data visualization is more more powerful but the objective is how many people died and how many people survived so i'm trying to take the uh, uh, same thing matplotlib and seaborn i am loading this data set first i showed you an example how to use the swarm plot okay now i am trying to show you using this titanic data set there are three classes in the ship okay there's first class the second class and the third class how many of them survived how many of them died okay what kind of gender they belong to they whether they male or female okay i am just loading the data set all right i am then trying to give a bar graph so when i see the bar graph what what is your observation i'll just give you one minute okay i'll just give you one minute just put in the chat session when you see this graph i told you it's about titanic the x axis which uh, uh uh which path they traveled and on to the y i'm using how many of them survived and what is the gender okay so one is male and other is female is let me see the first class good survival right a big round of applause to kitty this is the second answer ma'am you are giving and you are right so uh, first class i didn't say anything just see the picture and say the first class has got the highest survival rate okay and then and i am also using c bar you can also use listed color maps like this okay this is an example of listed color maps okay now i will show you okay i will show you the time is very less but still i'll try to accommodate what is the best okay now uh, now you try i just showed you for till now i showed you the basics of about matplotlib and seaborn and this session i'm going to say about the same iris data set because now you know what is iris data set okay so here again i'm using seaborn and matplotlib okay seaborn and matplotlib i am uh, importing the same data set i i told you right when i showed you here did you find out how many instances i don't know whether you know to the turn or there are 150 instances so and in addition i said there are three species iris setosa iris virginia and i uh, and one more thing right and here uh, yeah setosa virginia and veris color okay so 50 plus 50 plus 50 totally 150 totally 150 so i'm using same as plotlib i'm using a scatter plot okay so when i see scatter plot i can see some outliers okay and then i'm trying to use a join plot 
but both sepal length and sepal width okay both sepal length and sepal width i'm trying to put a joint part this is possible using whenever i use sns here it's uh, user defined you can change it but here i've used sns and face it grid so each of them have got their own color species all right and also you remember i showed you box plot or mat plot lib in the first the same box plot is also can be done in seaborn and strip plot and box plot okay both i'm trying to share it and this is a beautiful plot which is called a violin plot okay the violin plot okay so previous and uh, which has got a denser region and it's also used in medical sciences also okay this face it grit and this is a beautiful plot called as pair plot okay all the pairs okay iris id we are dropping with this what are the species the different kinds of plots okay i'm just trying to use a pair plot this can be done and this already i told you about back box plot and now i'm coming to a very important concept called as andrews curve i don't know whether you would have listened about andrews curve from uh, andrews curve in for attributes of samples as coefficient for our fourier series okay uh, you i told you right lot of packages are inbuilt you need not code i'm trying to use this uh, curve called as andrews curves right i'm going to call it as andrews curve it's a very sophisticated tool i just given 150 lines can you see which is more predominant yes is iron vagina so this is about almost parallel coordinates if i want to plot about parallel coordinates that is also possible using this package the same data set see it's just a simple data set how many packages i am trying to how many types of visualization i am trying to give and the next tool that we are going to move on is called bokeh okay it's very flexible it's it is used to create common plots okay and it is uh, and it's more interactive okay so tools and widgets lets you audience to prop what if scenarios okay if this happens what would happen for what if scenarios bokeh can be used to drill down to details of your data all right and then it's very shareable you can share it into your web page or you can share it into uh, jupiter kind of notebooks and it works with all py data tools okay and now i'll show you an ex the examples of uh, okay is python language only will give graph uh, no geeta ma'am here this this session is all about it is mainly used for machine learning and deep learning algorithms this session we are seeing about data visualization so i'm trying to take the same Uh, iris data set okay uh, set us of for red color and versi color for green or vision of for blue okay i'm going to use bokeh and see here it opens into a new html page okay so here like this and here it's more interactive if i want to clear out only this page i can maximize it all right if i want to learn only about this space then only that space could be collected and i could save it as whatever i want to save it okay so this is a simple example of a board bokeh where we get output itself into a, a different page okay and uh, this is also a board bokeh okay so i can uh, specify what kind of output i need to have i'm trying to have it as an html page it's running yeah so i can get the output as an html page whatever values i've given like x is 1 2 3 when x is 1 y is 6 when x is 1 okay the value is 1 and the value plotted is 6 okay and also i can work for different lines so okay yeah this already showed you the color scatter the color scatter also it's more interactive if i want to check only this space whatever the space i want i can only highlight it okay this is an example about uh, uh color scatter and lot of things are there okay and we have very less time to show to you all right and the next tool that i will move on is that yeah the next tool 
the next package is called Folium. I'll just show you. It is to visualize data on an interactive leaflet map. Okay, leaflet map. Can one of you say in which year Chennai had the highest rainfall? In which year and which month Chennai has the highest rainfall? 2015. You are very sharp, sir. Okay. Thank you. Big round of applause to Mohammed, sir. Now I just taken. Uh, the analysis of uh, a data set using a JSON format. I showed you an example of a normal list, okay, and I showed you about CSV files. And here, and I'm just showing you an example. I've taken it as a JSON format, okay, JavaScript for object notation. Thank you, Bharati Kanan, sir. Thank you. Okay, and here I've uh, given in the data uh, into, okay, as a JSON file. All right, and then uh, uh, for each places, okay. Can you see? I've given for Chennai, okay, for 10 years data set for Kolkata, for Bangalore, for Cochin, for Delhi, for Mumbai, for Srinagar, and for Sikkim. Once I run this, so I'll come here. So, uh, okay. When I'm trying to click onto one place, I will get. What is the temperature? What was the highest rainfall? If you see this, I can tell which uh, which month they have got the highest rainfall. Can one of you give me the answer out of this ten months? Which month there was the highest rainfall in this particular place? Sorry, yeah. Can you give me the answer, please? In two thousand seven. You can find the highest rainfall. Okay, so we have plotted only for India. If I take Chennai, if I just click on Chennai out of the 10 months. Okay, if I give you data for 10 months on which month, oh, sorry, for 10, 10 years on for which month is the highest rainfall, but within few fraction of seconds, okay, few fraction of seconds, you are able to find like in 2005, October we have got the highest rainfall so like this also visualization can be done using the tool called a uh, folium using the tool called folium okay uh, thank you for answering you are all with me i just completed with the next five minutes all right the next tool is called plotly okay it's mainly it's a tech computing company it's used for online analytics statistics and graphic tools i'll show you about it and it you can use the scattered plots the line plot the box plot the contour you've already seen and also the time series plots okay so it's a very interactive online graph okay and um I will show you about, I will show uh, to you about, um, uh, this is about the Plotly, okay? So I'm just uh, trying to use Plotly for a scatter plot and a layout plot. It is running. You can figure out the differences. Can you see? This is the same plot has been taken into an HTML page, okay? And also normal scatter plots are available, and also lines with markers. Okay, lines with markers. All kind of plots. I've given three. So I've given for markers, lines with markers, and lines. So if if you do your research publications, uh, then you can use these tools uh, to make your plots and you have got a more uh, good output for the uh, applications that you've developed. More than your research, okay? How are you going to forecast your research into your research publications and paper? And this is an, another example. So as I hover over it, okay, I'll just uh, zoom a little. As I hover, I can see what is the traces. The quad, I told you not about the box plot, the qu quadrilateral, the mean, and the mi minimum, the median, and the next quadrilateral. So it is also a very, very useful graph when used for researchers. Though you have one results of it, how are you going to visualize it is going to play. All these tools, I'm trying to use it from uh, Plotly. Okay, I'm using it from Plotly. Can you see how beautiful it is without smoothening and with smoothening? All right. So all these plots are available using Plotly and a lot of visualizations can be done. The final thing, I'm just taking the finance chart. Okay, I'm try trying to take the finance chart from Apple. How is there? I'm just directly importing it from the website. And I'm going to plot the uh, graph for it. Okay. 
okay so at the end of the session i yeah see how their finance was there from 2015 2016 jan april june october and to number so in one view i can see as the year 2017 they have increased the financial status was higher okay the financial uh, status was higher this is about the plot lee okay this is about the plot lee graph okay the plot lee graph and um, uh, geo plot lib is another open source for geographical data i'll show you an example uh, just i'll run through an example about uh, uh, the covid 19 data analysis how it has been done Okay, here you can have heat maps. Okay, just give me two to three minutes. So I'll wind it off. Okay, I'll show you about this COVID nineteen data sets, right? So I'm just taking one of the packages I've seen: NumPy, Numerical Python, Pandas, Matplotlib. Okay, Seaborn. Okay, these are the packages I've used. Only these packages, whatever I've discussed with you, the simple packages I have used here. All right. Okay. So, and I'm also using Plotly. Okay. Plotly to plot my graphs. Okay. So, what are the packages I've showed you? How you can see now how much worth learning this data visualization packages. Right. So, and now coming into, I'm just loading my data set. Okay. I'm just loading my data set. Uh, how many, which country? You know, when you travel with your Google Maps, so finding out the location, it takes the latitude and longitude. I'm taking the latitude, longitude, how many confirmed cases, how many death cases, how many recovered cases, right? Okay. I'm just trying to find out what are the data inside, how many counts, how many countries the data set, how many unique values, okay? I'm just trying to describe uh, the integral values, sorry, the numerical values in my data set. So the first data, I'm taking it from uh, January, okay? The data set is from 22nd January 2020 to 14th April 2020. So the data sets I've taken for both the COVID, it's a real uh, COVID-19 data set analysis, right? So I've taken the number of affected, the confirmed cases, the death and recovered cases with their latitude and longitude from 22nd January to 14th April, from 22nd January to 14th April. I'm finding is there any null values? If there is null values, it will not work properly. So I'm just renaming the columns, okay? And from this confirmed death and recovered, so I'm I'm subtracting my confirmed from my death and from the recovered. So I will know how many active cases. But my data set doesn't have active cases. It has only confirmed cases, death and recovered. Okay, I'll just show you how it works. So in my widespread, okay, I can just run this. I've used uh, uh, Plotly. Okay, I've used Plotly. If I run it, you can show. From January, you know, it was more predominant in China. Okay as the days are increasing you can see the COVID 19 is spread around the world it's also in america and in china and it is trying to in enter into africa right now okay i'll just try to drag it see by the end of this lot of places COVID 19. see how beautiful is data visualization right and uh, due to lack of time uh, okay, then I'm trying to find where is the maximum case, where is, this is another graph called Clo Corofleth, okay, Corofleth, Corofleth graph. According to the density, I can know uh, where the number of cases in India we can find, okay, Eden. So, Russia, okay. This is about one example of a graph. This is a scatter plot. So when I click on each plot in India, latitude and longitude, how many recovered cases in the four months? How many recovered cases in Damasia? How many recovered? There's no recovered cases in Canada and Nigeria, Mozambique. So can you figure it out? Throughout the world, I can see for that uh, month from January to April, how it is how it was there this is about the recovered cases and here the death count i can see in us it was 899 it was 62 in uh, sri lanka it is seven in india 393 cases not now not now between january to april 
okay and i can plot the graph and see how beautiful how the death rate was increasing initially the death rate was less the number of sorry not the death rate the total cases was increased to a very large extent in april okay i can also group by okay the top 20 so us was the top that has got the most confirmed cases okay and then also i have uh, us uh, most active cases okay and then i group by most death cases in us then italy then spain not now it's almost from january february sorry march and april okay which is the most recovered country can you guess china yes china has got the most recovery speed then germany then spain so like this with a normal data set you can do a plentiful kind of data visualization in python there is more thing that could be done but due to but this session is only about data visualization and the final and the final thing is about i'll just take one or two minutes okay pygal it's a very very beautiful tool for data visualization it allows the user to create sbg support vector graphics and it can be used beautifully in your websites I'll just show a quick demo of it and then we will conclude with the session. Okay, this is about PyGal. I'm just uh, taking about a Fibonacci series. I'm importing my PyGal. I'm trying to generate a bar graph. Okay, once I generate my bar graph, when this dollar symbol goes off, yeah, it has been uh, saved as bar chart.svg. Okay. And once it is done, yeah, it is done. And I can see since I've downloaded it, uh, I'll just show you in the location where it is saved. Mm, yeah. Joins, joins, don't do anything. So, when I'm trying to open with my Firefox or Chrome, I can show you how the output has been done. Okay. Can you see? So this is how the plots can be plotted. Okay, this is how the plots can be plotted using this. So this is an example of the bar chart dot SVG. So these are the major tools. Okay, these are the major tools that we have started with on today's session. Okay, so data visualization. I was trying to tell you about Matplotlib, the Seaborn, Bokeh, Folium, Plotly, GeoPlotlib, and PyGal. Okay, and PyGal. And I showed you the demonstration of with the different IREs data sets. And then I showed you about a Titanic data set. And I showed you at the last about the COVID 19 data sets. So you can do wonderfully well with a um, uh, lot of analytics could be done. If we had had time, mm -hmm. I would have showed you my real time analytics, okay, uh, of how a uh, company lively you can do an analytics. Okay, if somebody, if you're ready to view it, uh, you can just go into my company's website, uh, cirf.co.in. I'll show you how powerful is analytics and visualization. You can just type in the, both uh, 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 Google Meet viewers and also just type in my website cirf.co.in i'm not never related with you but i can show you how i can do my analytics in my company okay yes sumati ma'am lot of information about artificial intelligence is there available in my website in my youtube channel you can uh, uh, you can listen to it and you can get uh, uh, updated the best of my thing whatever i know i've shared it with you all by the meantime, you can also subscribe to my channel. I've shared the YouTube link with Ram Kumar sir. Probably he can share uh, the YouTube link in the live session. So even after the end of the session, uh, if you would like to uh, listen to this lecture or if you want to share it to people, you can do it also. Okay, you can do it also. Uh, thank you, Ram Kumar sir. He has already shared it.
Thank you so much. And some of you can uh, just log into this. I'll just show you a quick demo of how analytics and visualization plays a vital role. This is my company's website, cirf.co.in. You can just travel between different pages. And during this COVID-19 time, we have trained more than 1,000, myself and my husband, we have trained more than 1,500 to 2,000 faculties around the world on how to teach. We are also providing the course on data science, 20 hours and 40 hours course. These are my lectures, OK? These are my lectures. When you click onto the lecture, it will drive you to the YouTube uh, link, and you can get benefited, OK? So now I can see when I click on audience, OK? I can click when I click on audience, okay, for this time, okay. So how many of them uh, are, 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 are have used my website, okay? How many of them have viewed my website? I can see it, okay? Uh, but maybe for the past seven days, okay? Maybe for the past 14 days or past month, okay? I'm just taking from 20 to 26. I have 170 active uh, new users and a set of uh, 24 are returning users. I can also uh, find uh, from which country people are viewing my website, OK? Uh, like from India, Oman, US, Germany, Switzerland, from many countries. Now I'm going to show you about the real-time analytics. Uh, participants, just one minute. You can just log into the website, cirf.co.in. I can show, I can say, see you now how many of you are right now. And only two of you are into the website. Okay, just take a minute to move on to my company's website and let us show to the participants whether the number is increasing or not. Two people from Chennai. When YouTube viewers also just log in to www.cirf.co.in. Okay. So as the, as the number of people, and most of them are only into the home page, so it's just in the home page. When number of people increases, and as they travel between the spaces, we'll be able to find out. So it will keep on probing out into people. And those who are getting into the website, they'll be able to see it. OK, they'll be able to see it. OK, now I can see there's one more person who have come, and he is from Ludhiana. There is one person from Ludhiana visiting my website right now. And all of them are one. One of them have moved into the intern. Very good, very good. Now I can see uh, Davangar. OK, there's one person from Davangar, too, from Chennai. See how powerful is analytics and data visualization. I'm into one part in Chennai. Ed, from Coimbatore. From Co I was expecting somebody from Coimbatore because this uh, program is hosted from Coimbatore. So there is one person from Coimbatore and uh, two, like So like this, you can do lots of analysis, okay? You can do lots of analysis. Thank you all for joining the session. I will share uh, my contact details, okay? If you would like... Um, to get in touch with me, I've given my mail ID, my mobile number, okay? And I've showed you my website, www.cirf.co.in. Thank you, Ram Kumar, sir, and thank you, uh, college, for, for having invited me. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I've seen Samai is really probably in the in of us college. I, yeah. I hear that name. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. So I would like okay. to uh, thank the organizers for having invited me to give a talk. I'd like to thank uh, Dr. NGP Institute of Technology, Coimbatore, and for taking this initiative. Hope uh, viewers, uh, uh, the YouTube channel has been shared. Kindly subscribe to the channel. The best takeaway is if you are benefited during this session, after the end of the session, give your feedback in the comments. I repeat it. Give your feedback in the comment session. Thank you all. God bless. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Welcome, thank sir. Thank you for the wonderful session. Hope the participants have been benefited. Participants, I have shared the YouTube link, the chat box, so you can subscribe to ma'am channel so that you can connect with the future events also. So thank you, one and all present here. Also, the feedback link has been shared here. Kindly fill the feedback link. Now I request Patmanavan to deliver. Yes, sir. 
uh, very present management. I would like to thank our chief guest, Dr. D. Dorian Rubin, for an interactive session. And also, I thank our management, patron, principal, sir, president, and vice president, and members of Dr. MGP IT institutions, Innovation Council, and all the participants' various institutions for making this session. This is a successful one. Thank you. Thank you, participants. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you all for all the participants for joining the session.